All right, guys, welcome back. CFP here with Survival Living. Today, I want to talk about some possible threats, and they are threats to our world. The first I want to talk about is in the world today, we have seven, roughly seven and a half billion people living on it. The number one country, of course, is China with 1.4 billion people, followed close by India with its population of 1.3 billion. The United States falls in the third with 332 million, roughly. And number four comes Indonesia at 267 million. So keep in mind all this population, all these people living their daily lives. They rely on one thing to keep everything together. It's power. And I mean electrical power. Electrical power is what's going to keep everything running. Keeps people alive. Everybody uses power. Everything from your vehicles on the road to your refineries, your food production, your fuel production, your air conditioning, your heater, everything relies on power. Without power, everything shuts down. An electronic magnetic pulse, or an EMP, also known as a transit electromagnetic energy. Such a energy can originate, whether it be natural or man-made, can occur as a radiated electric or magnetic field or a conducted electric current dependent on the source. An EMP itself is not harmful to people, but its aftermath would be devastating. Long-lasting effects on the power grid and electronics could ultimately kill 90% U.S. population. Now, we did have a warning back March 26, 2019. President Donald Trump issued an executive order on coordinating national resilience to electromagnetic pulse. On September 2, 1859, the world was hit with a solar storm known as the Carrington Event. It was a powerful geomagnetic storm. Telegraph wires, high-tech stuff at the time, started to short out in the United States and Europe, igniting wildfires. Studies show a tech-destroying solar flare could hit Earth within 100 years. So with these EMPs and CMEs that we try to prepare for, many of us have started building our own Faraday cages to keep our special electronics, night vision, two-way radios, ham radios, TVs, DVD players, things like that. We started putting in storage and Faraday cages to resist the electromagnetic pulse. So we have some electronics that do work. Unfortunately, some of the major electronics like solar panels, wind turbines, they're so large, you have to have a lot of room to make Faraday cages for them. You're making huge crates. So Luckily, though, there are a lot of people that have been doing it. We personally have been doing that. We have the storage, stuff that's put back in case the power goes out. Mainly because when the power goes out, all is electronic is in operation. Without protection, they will be fried. Our food and water supply is going to be affected greatly by an EMP or a CME. These things are going to stop. The farms that we usually get our food from even though there's large farms now, these huge agricultural farms that are built by big businesses, they're not going to last. There's no power, there's no way to get fuel, there's no way to make fertilizers. All these things are going to cease to exist. There's not going to be production of it. Now these larger farms and things have been feeding America. Now when they disappear, there will be some small farms around. But those can be family ran, stuff that you're going to be doing in your own garden, stuff like that. The production of food is going to stop. People are going to get hungry very fast. Now, to put in perspective our food supply and demand system, it is estimated that the mills in the United States travel about 1,500 miles to get from the farm to the plate. That is our current system. When people find out there's no food in the grocery store, right now we have it easy. We can go to the grocery store, get whatever we want, as long as we have the finances to do it. Even people that are desperate without financing, that is steal. They steal the food right off the shelf. The problem is there will not be food on the shelf to steal, to buy. There just won't be anything around. 
That's where seeds come in, growing your own food, having a supply, being prepared. That is how you survive an EMP or a CME. You have to have food put back, ways to grow your own food. You cannot rely on the system at all. Now let's talk about violence, gangs, things like that that's going to be happening when food production is no longer available. When people are starving for food, there's no law around because, frankly, there's not enough law around to enforce rules. There's going to be a lot of rampaging going on. People are going to be stealing and they're going to be killing over food, over water, over supplies that they think they need or really do need. One of the things I want to point out, a lot of people want to say, well, the military will come in and they'll lock things down and protect everybody. Now remember, there's over 300 million people in the United States. As of September 2017, the Defense Department claims that there are 1.3 million active duty military personnel and 800,000 reserve forces. That's just over 2 million personnel to control a country of 332 million. Now, with local law enforcement, there's 18,000 federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies around the United States. Between 750,000 to 850,000 sworn officers, that is your local police, state police, so let's just say roughly 3 million people to provide security to enforce laws. That's counting the military. So basically, the math proves there's no way to control a whole country with no power, no food, no water, with government use. It's going to be a complete free-for-all. Now there's going to come a time when people start to bug out. They're going to run to the woods people that don't have a plan. That's where a lot of people are going to lose their lives. Fortunately, preppers know that when it comes to bug out location, things like that, they plan ahead. They have a plan for a bug out trip. They know the land they're going to, and that it's not running out to the woods. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that think they're just going to have a good old time in the woods. They're going to pop up their hammock, play with the dog, have their tents out in the open, all the lanterns go on. No big deal, it's just a camping trip. Unfortunately, that's just ringing the dinner bell or people are gonna come take your stuff. On top of our Faraday cages that we have here at the house, we also took the next step up and purchased EMP shield. One for a vehicle, and right now we've only got one for a solar system. We don't have anything for our generators yet, but they do make EMP shield for generators. Uh, right now, if you go to EMP Shield's website and use the promo code CALCLUB to get $50 off each device that you purchase through EMP Shield. Um, a good friend, Prescott Caliber Club, he is running his affiliate with them, so we are promoting his affiliate link for y'all. It's uh, again CALCLUB. Welcome back everyone and thank you for subscribing to Caliber Club TV. The Prescott Caliber Club now has an online store available at prescottcalclub.com. The online store currently is full of mostly firearm accessories, uh, but we will be adding additional gear consistently for the foreseeable future. Everything you see behind me is going to be featured online and for sale. Since you're one of our valued subscribers, I'd like to extend an additional discount code to you. You can enter the code SUBSCRIBE5 to get 5% off store-wide online at the Prescott Caliber Club. So hop online and go check out the store today and thank you so much for being one of our loyal subscribers.